Children of Morta is one of the most unique games to arrive in 2019, and after sinking countless hours into the title, I came to a few realizations I needed to share. My name is Kodiak, and today I'm revealing everything I wish I had known sooner about Dead Mage's action RPG, Children of Morta. Children of Morta is a beautiful game with addicting combat and procedurally generated dungeons that make every run unique, but there are a few things that can hold you back if you're struggling to progress. First and foremost is you have to break old habits. Children of Morta is one of the only games I can think of that uses a shared skill system. It can be tempting to level up your favorite character and stick with the one that feels best to your individual playstyle, but by doing that you miss out on team-wide bonuses that affect each of your characters. At levels 4, 8, 14, and 20, you receive powerful bonuses, and those can't be ignored, especially if you're struggling. Swapping to somebody new and reaching those low-level thresholds is vital to your survival, especially during the harder difficulties, so break out of your comfort zone and take on a new challenge. Children of Morta definitely dances with the devil when it comes to RNG. Some runs will be great and you'll feel like an unstoppable force, Others will be bone dry and you'll be hanging on for dear life. At the end of the day, you have to control the things you can control. Every time you're back at your home base, you have the option to upgrade a wide variety of passive effects. It can be tempting to spread the wealth and really boost this or that, but when push comes to shove, there are really only two things that matter in a fight how much damage you do, and how little damage you take. You'll start raking in the morph quickly, especially in the harder dungeons, so don't feel like you have to spend your coin just to spend it. It's best to wait and upgrade the things that's going to make an immediate impact on progression. Now I will admit there comes a point when you have so much morph, you can't ignore smaller upgrades, and that's fine. Just try and fight the urge to spend everything you have just because you can. Those constant upgrades to damage and defense make clearing floors and killing bosses a whole lot easier, so don't discount the big purchase just because of the price tag. You'll thank me later, I promise. Children of Morta is all about moving forward, even if you have to take a step back. There are times when you'll be stuck on a boss, need a bit of more of, or just need a break, and in that case, it's okay to go back into an easier dungeon. The game doesn't outwardly penalize you for stepping back into older content. In fact, I didn't really notice much of any difference the few times I went back to tackle the older dungeons. Obviously, you want to keep things fresh and work on the hardest content available. You'll get the most XP and more of doing so. But when you're facing a tough challenge or just can't keep dying to the same boss, it's okay to take a step back. I've actually done this a number of times for other reasons as well. As I mentioned before, it's really important to get comfortable and level up each of the members of the Bergson family, so I've gone back into previous zones or levels just to refine my skills. For whatever reason, I have the biggest challenge with Lucy, the Fire Mage character in the game, so I've gone back repeatedly to build up my skill set, get more comfortable with the character, all while continuing to progress my team. There's no shame in stepping back, just shame in not realizing you have that option. I'm so bummed about this next section because it's a tip I wish wasn't true. It actually is something that really disappoints me about a game I really enjoy. I was at a point in Children of Morta where I just couldn't beat a boss. I had done everything in my power to boost my team, refine my skills, even tried out a number of different characters, but the truth was my approach was wrong. Sometimes trial and error is your best friend, but let me save you some trouble and just explain a simple truth. Sometimes, spamming attacks on a boss is the best way to defeat them, especially if you have the right divines, runes, and relics. On multiple occasions, I've suffered through a few smacks on the head only to unleash every ounce of damage I could on the boss in an attempt to cheat death. It's worked more times than it hasn't, and while it's not a satisfying way to win, it is effective. Now, this only works if you have the right gear and aren't completely mindless when fighting. You should still make use of your dodge rolls, and sometimes you may need a second to let a divine recharge or wait for the right window to engage. Waiting for the right time to attack can be the difference between life or death, but you have to commit. Are you going to die occasionally? Absolutely, but sometimes a good all-in approach works. I just wish it didn't. To wrap up this video, I really wanted to hammer home what makes Children of Morta great. 
the characters. As I mentioned before, it's easy to get stuck in your ways and play the same character over and over again. But the truth is, the team has done a good job making unique, playable characters that all bring something unique to the table. Make sure to rotate who you play, not only for the skill points, but because picking one up after a few runs may make you realize how much you enjoy playing them. I had left Linda on the shelf for a while because of the much slower pace she plays at, but when I was going into a particularly nasty zone, I decided to bring her back into the fight, and I wasn't disappointed. Each character thrives under certain circumstances, you just need to identify what. For instance, Linda is all about kiting enemies around. When played right, you should rarely take damage. Joey, on the other hand, is an all or nothing type of guy. His hammer is so slow that you have to really commit to your actions, which means collecting a big group of enemies, then smacking them into oblivion. It's these small tips that go a long way to making your run even smoother. Each character plays differently, and if you have a question about a specific approach, feel free to drop us a line in the comments section below or join the Game Gurus on Discord where you can ask me directly. I'm always happy to help when I can. I hope Children of Morta gets the attention it deserves. It's truly a unique take on action RPGs, and with a boring summer finally in the rearview mirror, it's definitely a game worth checking out. If you do have any questions about the game, feel free to reach out by leaving us a comment or joining our Discord. And remember to give the video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel if you want more in-depth gaming videos in your feed. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at the Game Gurus, thanks for watching, and play on.